Good morning, boys and girls. It's Auntie Jana checking in with you. I hope you enjoyed our five-week story of Hamid and his sister Kinza. Today, I have a brand new story to tell you, and it's a story of a man who really lived and served God. His name was John Payton, and John Payton was a missionary to the New Hebrides Islands many years ago. And for the next five weeks, we are going to learn about John from the time he was a little boy until he served God as a missionary in, I can't tell you, maybe I will, in the New Hebrides Islands. Let's go back to when John was just a little boy. John did not grow up in South Africa. He grew up in the country of Scotland, in a little village called Tortherwald, up in the north of Scotland, and John was born almost 200 years ago. Now you must remember, that's before cars, that's before computers, that's before the internet and television, so his life was quite a bit different than ours. John had a very happy home, and he loved his mom and dad and his brothers and sisters. One of the favorite times of the day for John was right after supper time when they would get together as a family, and dad, his dad, would sit and read the Bible to the family, then they would take time to pray as a family. John loved to hear his dad pray. It sounded like he, he, his dad was a great friend of God and he talked so earnestly and asked God for each one of his children every single day. And John knew his dad loved God and he wanted to do what was right. Well, John's family was kind of poor. There was a lot of kids in the family. I'm going to ask you how many kids, and if you're quick, you're probably going to quickly count there. You can see his mom and dad, and if you look at this picture, you're going to tell me, Oh, Auntie Janet, Janet I know. There's seven. But actually, this picture doesn't show all of his brothers and sisters. John was the oldest of 11 kids. Can you imagine having 11 kids in your family? We have four kids in our family, and that's busy enough, but 11 kids, and John was the oldest. They lived in a little house that had a thatched roof, and the house only had two rooms. The main room on one side of the room was the kitchen area where his mom would make porridge for breakfast and then would cook potatoes and turnips for them and some other meat sometimes when they had the money to buy meat. At the other end of the big room, there was two huge beds with great big blankets and quilts on them, and all the children slept do, 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 side by side with each other in, the, in the, these two great big beds. And then in the middle of the house, there was a small room where his mom and dad had their own little bedroom. And in one little corner tucked away in the side was where John's dad had his machines where his job was to make socks. And these machines would make socks and he would sell them and that's how he supported his family. Even though they didn't have much, they were a happy family and they loved God and their, his mom and dad taught him about God and how Jesus loved him from an early age. In fact, when John was just a young boy, he realized that he was a sinner and needed to trust Jesus to be his savior. So he, one night he prayed and told God that he was sorry for his sin and trusted that Jesus came and died for him and trusted Jesus as his savior and he became a Christian. That very same night, John prayed again and he said, Dear God, I want you to know that now I belong to you and I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do with my life. My life is for you to use and to bring pleasing, be pleasing to you. John didn't know what it would mean, what he would be when he grew up, but he wanted to, to promise his life to be used for God. Well, John loved to go to school. When he was old enough to go to school, off he went to the village school, and he went, and he was an eager learner and did well. But one day his mom looked at him and said, John, you have one set of clothes, one suit, and I keep mending it and fixing it for you and washing it. It is so old, John, it's embarrassing. You can't go back to school with only that one set of clothes. Well, that night, as they got together as a family to pray, you can see them here all kneeling and praying. And while they were praying, John heard a noise. It sounded like a door was opening. And if it was me, I would have peeked my eyes open just to see who it was. 
But the story says John kept his eyes closed because his dad was praying. He heard the door open, a little thud, and the door close. As soon as his dad finished praying, John jumped up and ran to the door, and there on the ground was a package. John quickly opened it up, and inside was a brand new suit of clothes. They had prayed that God would provide him with clothes, and God answered his prayer. He quickly took the suit coat and pants out, tried it on with a new shirt, and it fit him absolutely perfectly. The next day, he went off to school, so proud in his new clothes, marched right into school, and the schoolmaster said, John, you, you look smart today. What's different about you? Look, sir, look, sir, I have new clothes. The schoolmaster smiled. I can see. Guess what, schoolmaster? Last night when we were having our family t devotion time, we prayed and asked God to give me new clothes, and God answered our prayer. The schoolmaster just smiled. He said, John, whenever in life you need something, you go to God and ask him in prayer. Let me tell you a secret. Many years later, John found out that it was his schoolmaster who had given him the clothes, but it was an answer to his prayer, and God provided him with those clothes. John worked hard. He loved school, but the story tells us that John's teacher was a very harsh teacher, and sometimes John would get punished in school for things that he really even didn't do. As he got a little bit older and as his family got more children in there, he needed to leave school to help his family earn money to care for the, his younger brothers and sisters. So when he was only 11 and a half years old, John stopped going to school. This isn't a good plan for today, boys and girls, but back when he lived, this is what he had to do. He stopped going to school and got a job. His job was working with a man who made maps, and John would have to trace the maps. Remember, they didn't have computers. It was all done by hand, and John worked with the map maker. In fact, he got, had to get up early every morning. He walked four miles to school to work, worked all day, and walked four miles or six kilometers back every evening. But John was thankful for his work, and even though he wasn't in school anymore, he continued learning. He often was seen carrying a book, reading as he walked, and even on his lunch breaks, he would go and sit by the river, eat his lunch, and read a book. Well, one day his boss called him into his office and said to John, John, I've been watching you. Every lunchtime when the other young men go and play sports and do different things, you don't do that. I've seen you study and work and read. I'm impressed, John. You're a good worker, and I want to offer you a better job. John was so excited. Really? I can earn more money? He kept thinking, I'll be able to help my family. Yes, the man said. I want to train you for a special job in our company. And the government will give me money to help train you, but you must make a promise. John, you must promise to stay with my company for seven years. You will earn a good salary, and I will train you so that you'll have better skills. John stopped. He wondered what he should say. In his heart, he wanted to say, yes, please, I want the job. But then he knew that he had made a promise to God that he would do what God wanted him to do. And already he felt that God was going, leading him to serve him full time in Christian service. So very politely, he looked at his boss and said, I'm sorry, sir, I cannot accept the offer. The man was surprised. Why not, John? It's a wonderful offer. No, sir, I serve another master. Another master? But I am your boss. Who is this master? John said, my master is the Lord Jesus, and I have promised him that I will serve him, and I believe that God may be calling me to full-time work in his service. His boss got so angry. If you will not accept this offer, this is an offer that no one in their right mind would refuse. Then leave my company. You will. I will fire you from your job today. And even though John was a good employee, worked hard, he looked at the man and said, sir, I must leave today and the man fired him. John was a little bit concerned. What would his parents say when he came home? Now he didn't have a job. But they knew that he'd made a decision to do what was right. And very soon after he got another job. It wasn't a job he enjoyed. 
It was a job for a farmer. You can see him here. It was a job he had never done before. He had to gather grain in large bales and tie it up. And it didn't seem like a great job. But John learned to work hard. And his character was being built through this time. He worked hard for this man for several months. And then he learned of a better job for him in the big city of Glasgow in Scotland. For the first time in his life, John was going to have to move far away from home where he wouldn't be able to come back and forth from home each day and see his family. He was sad about the thought of moving away from his parents, but he knew it was a good opportunity. And so, after speaking with his parents and sharing one last meal together and for breakfast, he gave his mom a big hug, packed his little bag on his, over his shoulder, and began his journey. He had tears down his, street, his face as he said goodbye to his mom. He didn't know how long it would be till he would see her again. He was going to go away to Glasgow. And as I told you, this is a big city. It was about 40 miles or 60 kilometers away. That would be like going from Nisna all the way to about Mossel Bay. And he didn't go in a car. He didn't go on a horse. He was going to walk. As he said goodbye to his mom, his father said, Come, John, I will walk with you for part of the way. John was pretty upset. He said goodbye to his mom, didn't know when he'd see her again, but he and his father walked together, the story says, for almost 10 kilometers together. When his dad stopped and said, John, I must stop. I need to go back home. But remember, son, always do what, what is right and do what God wants you to do. I'll be praying for you, John, and God be with you. John waved to his dad and off he went as just a young man to a big city, not knowing what to expect. He went off to the city. He found his job that he uh, had planned and started working hard and studying hard. But John put a lot of pressure on himself. He worked and studied so hard that he got very, very sick. In fact, he got so sick that he couldn't work and he couldn't study anymore. He lay there in his bed, sick, sick, sick. Finally, he recovered, but now he didn't have a job anymore. So he had to start walking up and down the streets of Glasgow, looking for signs or for places who were looking for people to work. And do you know something? God looks after his children. Because as John was walking up and down the streets, he walked by a church. And there by the church, there was a school attached to the church, and he noticed a sign that said, Teacher Wanted. John thought, well, I've never been a teacher before, but I love to learn. Maybe this is a job I could, I could do. He went in, spoke to the pastor and said, sir, I would like to apply for the job of being a teacher. The pastor said, are you sure? It, it's a very difficult class of boys at the Mary Hill Free Church School. But if you're willing to, and after he interviewed John, he said, if you're willing to accept the job, then I'm willing to grant you the job. Yes, sir, I'd like the job. I will be a teacher. When John reported for his first day of work, here was the pastor, and the pastor handed a large cane to John. John looked at him with a funny look on his face and said, Sir, why are you handing me this? I'm going to be a teacher. Son, these boys in your class are very mischievous. They're very badly behaved, and you will need this cane to keep them under control. John was a bit shocked. To use a cane to give a child a spanking or a hiding in school? Really? He thought, no, I won't need to use this, but I'll take it from the pastor. He took it from the pastor, and when the pastor left, he put it in the corner of the room, and he thought to himself, I'll never use this. He started to teach his class, and for a few days, things went well. But after less than a week, the boys in his class started to show their true colors. They were very disrespectful. They wouldn't work. They wouldn't do anything. They made fun of John. And when he tried to teach them, they were like, nah, 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 and making fun and laughing and just totally out of control. And there was one big boy in the class who was a bully, and he was the worst. John looked at him and said, if you do not stop, you will be punished. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. And if you do not stop, you will be punished. He couldn't believe he was th threatening him. And he thought he would never use the cane, but the boy continued. He was very rude and very disruptive in the class. So John went, he, uh, 
he took the cane and this boy here you can see him here this would never happen today in school but it did 200 years ago john took the cane and the boy came to the front of the classroom and in front of all the children in the class he was given a hiding the boy was embarrassed and he, he called out to John, please, sir, please, sir, I'll obey. I will do what's right. Please stop. After John gave him a hiding, he stopped and he apologized. You would think if you were sitting in that class and saw a teacher give another boy a hiding in front of everyone, that everybody would be very well behaved. But the very next day, two more boys were very disrespectful. And John thought, I must have order in my classroom. He called those two boys up to the front of the class. You can see them here. They had been disrupting and disobeying. He's got his cane in his hand. And he decided to ask the class, what should I do to these two boys? And some kids in the class said, they're guilty, sir. They're disrespectful. They're disobedient. They deserve a hiding as well. Give them a hiding. That's what they deserve. But John didn't want to be known as the teacher who was always giving his students a hiding. He said, no, I think what I'm going to do, this is these boys first time disobeying. I'm going to show mercy to them. If these boys are willing to apologize and agree not to be disruptive and disobey in class again, then I will not punish them. The two boys looked up, they couldn't believe it. And with very shameful faces, they, they apologized in front of the whole class for their bad behavior. And John let them go back to their seats without a punishment. Do you know something? After that, the boys in John's class obeyed and there was never any more trouble. They knew that John loved them and cared for them, but yet he was also fair and merciful to them. And he continued to teach them. In fact, he taught all that year and the boys in his class became some of the best students ever. And at the end of the school year, when John was expecting to get a new contract for the next year to come back and teach, the pastor of the church and the other board members who were responsible for the school said, no, these boys have done so well. We think that they need a teacher who is better qualified for you than you. And they fired John. What? John had done such a good job that he worked himself out of a job. It didn't sound too fair, and John, at this stage, was pretty discouraged because he had done his best, and it seemed like he was being punished by losing his job for being a good teacher. I'm going to have to leave it here for now, for today, but we're going to find out what new job happens for John next week and where God leads him and how God leads him to become a missionary. I hope you've enjoyed this first lesson and come back next week to find out what happens in the life of John Payton. Bye.